Hey folks, welcome back to another Dice Tower preview. I'm Mark, and today we're taking a look at Union Stockyards, which is brought to you by Solid Rock Games. It's for two to five players, ages 14 and up, and games generally run about 45 to 90 minutes. Opening in 1865, the Union Stockyards became Chicago's largest industry and one of the city's top tourist attractions with half a million visitors annually in the early 1900s. From the Civil War through the 1920s, more meat was processed here than anywhere else in the world. During its height, 40,000 mostly immigrant workers labored in the busiest square mile on earth, where over 1 million livestock passed monthly. Supplying 80% of all U.S. meat, there were over 2,300 livestock pins and 130 miles of railroad within the yards. In Union Stockyards, you play one of the big five meat packers, developing technologies to use every part of the animal while battling labor unions and manipulating the market to your advantage. The game is played over six years, or rounds, each beginning with a historical event, affecting game conditions, or adding an additional action players can take. Actions are selected through worker placement. However, if you don't pay your workers enough, some of them may go on strike. By processing livestock, cattle, hogs, and sheep, players earn cash based on their unique profit margins, which can be improved upon by constructing buildings, establishing branch houses in eastern markets, and improving your brand reputation. But be careful, demand created by the players for each type of animal will change livestock cost, affecting everyone's profit margins. Will you manage to build the wealthiest meatpacking empire in order to win the game? Welcome to the yards. So your main goal here is to gain the most wealth. And one of the nice things is that there's not just one way to gain wealth, there's multiple ways. You have savings, you have money on hand, you're gonna get brand reputation, lots of options. And you'll see as you move through the game that you really have some fun, interesting choices around what you're doing. One of my favorite aspects is building, which we'll get to, because it's a bit of a puzzle. I really like that aspect of the game, actually. But every round of the game is considered a year, and you have year cards that you'll set up ahead of time. Now, these are gonna potentially have some additional worker placement spots on them, but also, you're gonna be able to see cards that might raise livestock prices. So that will impact your profit margins for that particular year. Also, every time you flip one of these cards, you're going to have to adjust the Union Spirit. Now, Union Spirit is gonna be fine until it hits four or five, and then workers are going to go on strike. And when they do, you have to take one of your workers for that year and place them on the picket line. And there's multiple ways to lower this, but in general, you know, this is really going to impact what you're available to you when you play that particular year. Now, the main livestock track, that's probably the thing you want to keep the eye on the most because based on your particular livestock animal you have in play will determine your profit margin based on the price, the current going price of the livestock. So you probably don't want to process any if you're in a negative margins there. So keep an eye on this for sure. And it, at the start of every year, we'll determine based on the current price, how many more animals are going to come into play that are coming in for that particular year. So along the edge, you'll see those icons showing how many more you add. And you'll add them here at the top of the board. These are also worker placement spots where you can place your workers in order to process that livestock and get the money for those. But you could only do one of each type per year. So if you placed your worker on hogs for this particular first year, you'll see that the going selling price right now is for $4 and you are currently at a margin of six. So you're going to get $2 for that particular processing of the hogs for this year. And remember, you can only do processing of each animal once per year. So that's very key. But you know, there's lots of other worker spots here and we're gonna jump to buildings first because again, this might be my favorite aspect of the game. You have building cards across the top of the board and some of them have icons and you'll see that you also have specialists. 
So once you achieve buildings with a certain number of icons, you can get these specialist cards as well. But in general, you're looking at these building cards and what's really nice is that it shows you the, the shape of the building that you're going to be placing into the packing town. Now, you have your main building of your color and you want to build off of that because you need to build a train, so to say, a connecting point from all the buildings so you can move that meat around and be more efficient with it for sure. So, but when you do build, you're gonna also have to be mindful of the squares, how many squares it takes. So for every square, you're going to have to pay a dollar for every square the building occupies. And when there's no cards out here, yes, there's cards, cause players can buy this land. But when there are no cards, if it's just open, you're gonna be paying that money to the bank. But players who have bought sections of land here will also gain money when you build across their land. Now, you can build all over their land, they can't stop you, but you do have to pay them. So, where the puzzly nature of this comes into play for Packing Town is more and more players will start to build buildings. And the thing you need to ensure always is that the building you're placing still has a connection back to yours in some way. You can go through other buildings, that's fine, but you do get efficiency bonuses for having the same colored buildings connect because it's moving the same type of meat. Now, there are also railroad connections, these tokens along the side of the board. Once you build next to one, then you move it over to the appropriate markets. Then also, but more importantly, probably at the top of your card is the fact that you get to adjust your profit margins in the stockyards area of the board and that's key but it might do other things like this one the ice house also adjusts your brand reputation so and as you move that up you'll also get to adjust the things in the stockyard as well into moving your profit margins up and so forth so the other thing about these cards that i really really like again is the historical bits they've got some nice flavor here some photos of the time period and this one the ice house i thought was really interesting 450,000 tons of ice was used from the Chicago River. So those different aspects add so much to the game. Also important to note that at the bottom of these building cards, you'll be able to adjust or move up your savings track around the edge of the board. Again, another way to get wealth in the game. Now, this building action is probably the most complex thing you'll be doing in the whole game. And so they've outlined it just really nicely on these really fantastic player boards, which let's take a look at these real quick. This will hold your workers, obviously. It'll hold your branch offices that you will be placing out into the different markets, giving you bonuses as well. So, but I, what I really like is about they represent different companies and there's more info, more tidbits around historical aspects of the game on the backside. So some, again, just really nice flavor around that time period and what you're doing. So. The rest of the actions around the board are gonna be much more simplified. And they'll, you'll notice that there are some ovals that are much larger than others. That just means multiple players can go there. The single ovals, the smaller ones, are just for a single worker to be placed. Now, you do have this idea of morale in the game. So if you end your in the game with negative, with morale tokens, I should say, it gives you a negative impact in your score. So one of the ways to get rid of those is that you have the wage increases. It will cost you money, obviously, but you'll place your worker there. You'll be able to remove one of those morale tokens from your board, and you'll also be able to adjust the union spirit back down. So it does benefit everybody because going on strike again, remember, you lose a worker. So above Packing Town, you'll find your building worker spots. There's four, but next to it, you have buy land, and that's where the land cards come into play. You'll be placing them out wherever you want to put them. And really, again, this is just a way for you to get more wealth. So when folks build across your land, they're gonna be paying you the money instead of the bank. And it is, again, like I said, another way to get wealth. So those are those areas. And then you do have a building of viaducts, which these are little black buildings, and they're really just meant to connect areas. Maybe you need to finish out where a bunch of the brown buildings connect or something like that. So it just adds, it helps you add those efficiencies for sure. Then you have brand reputation. And as you move up along this track, it will adjust your profit margins for the different types of animals. But you have a couple different options. You can do local Chicago advertising, which won't cost you any money and move you up one space. But you can do national advertising, which will move you up two, but will cost you $2.
And just a couple other things to take a look at here. We've got establishing branch houses. Now, you're gonna get some instant benefit from this. When you place one of your houses in one of the markets, you're gonna get either an increase in your profit margin in the stockyards, or you might get a brand reputation increase, or perhaps in your savings around the board. But you'd be placing your buildings on these spots. And you can have all the spots of a particular market if you got your buildings there first. Now, you have a couple other things here where you have uh, some political options, and based on who is in office will determine which of these is in play. Now, for one, you have establishing two branches. You'll have to pay $3 to do this, but on the other side, you'll see that you'll be adjusting to an eight-hour workday, which allows you to then remove a morale token and reduce that union spirit if you take that particular action. Now, how does that flip? Well, then you've got the campaign. You put a worker there and you're gonna get your savings adjusted, but then at the end, after you finish all your worker spots, everyone is played, you'll gather them back up. But the thing is, is that if you chose that as one of your spots, then you're gonna get the first player token and you'll get to decide which side of the campaign or which party is in power. And then the very last thing you're doing at the end of every year before you move on is you're gonna have to adjust the livestock pricing based on demand. So you'll look here at the animals, see how many were processed that particular year. Whichever has the least amount of animals is going to move up the most. You move up three spaces in the livestock pricing, hoping it doesn't affect your profit margin too much, but you can work on it in the next year. And then whichever animal has the most still available, well, that's gonna move down by two. So that could be beneficial for sure in that next year. And then, you know, the game is gonna continue this way for the six years. And then at the end, you're just gonna calculate all the wealth from all the different sources. And whoever has the most will win the game. All right, folks, just a reminder once again, this has been a Dice Tower paid preview. And everything you've seen here has been in prototype form. So keep a close eye on the campaign for any changes that still may occur. Now, with that said, I really like the historical aspect of this game. It added so much flavor to it, some really interesting tidbits, and the building part, that is by far my favorite. But you do have to work these spots in order to get that best profit margin and just continue to gain wealth more and more through the game. But again, the buildings are really fun. It comes very puzzly. I really like that aspect. But folks, ultimately, if this looks like something of interest to you, I'm sure they'd appreciate your support. So I think that's it for me. And until next time, we'll see you at the table.